Hi, I'm Nick from City Search, and I'm sitting here with none other than Morgan Spurlock, the uh, acclaimed documentary maker for the wildly successful uh, Super Size Me, uh, the TV series 30 Days, and now the new film, Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden? And it actually even comes with a book. I've got to ask, uh, why, oh why, would one guy set out to try and find Osama bin Laden. I mean, what were you thinking? Yeah, well, you know, why couldn't somebody with absolutely no training, experience, or expertise go off to find the world's most wanted man? You know, nobody else could find him, so I said, why not? You know, let's, let's see what we can figure out. I understand, like, the, the basic need was, or want was to make the world a kind of safer place, or at least understand the world that your son was going to be born into. Yeah. Um, but, excuse me if the logic seems a little skewed. I mean, what did right. you say to your wife... Uh, Alexandra, um, <laughs> I kind of want to make the world a safer place for my, you know, for young little Lakin. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go and find the world's most dangerous terrorist. Right. Hence why I am the worst husband ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, because what happened was we got the idea for the film uh, just before that, before about two months before we found out she was pregnant. You know, we were talking about how do we go find this guy. And then when we found out she was going to have a baby, I mean, it really shifted the whole focus of everything. Because then it wasn't just about where is he and why haven't we found him, but what kind of a world are we going to bring a kid into? And, uh, and believe me, she was uh, really non, none too happy about the idea of her husband while she is mid-pregnancy traipsing through Afghanistan and Pakistan looking for Osama bin Laden. But uh, the more we talked about it and the more we talked about why I wanted to make the film and I thought it was important, she kind of, uh, you know, she, she came around. Did you prepare at all for the possibility, however minute, yeah. that you might actually be granted an audience, that, you know, somehow they might have kidnapped you, you know, and led you kind of hooded and shackled to where to he is. the man himself. And yeah, no, it's one of those things we talked about quite a bit, you know, like what would happen if we found him, what would we ask him? And yeah, yeah and you know, we had like a list of questions that we wanted to try and go through. But, you know, for me, the biggest one was just like, how does this end? How does it all end? How does all the crazy go away? How do we make this stop? And maybe you'd get a real answer or maybe you just get, you know, a whole lot more crazy. Who knows? Perhaps if you brought like a McDonald's Happy Meal or something. Right, exactly. Break the ice, you know. <laughs> Look what I brought you all the way from America. You and Osama munching down some <laughs> yeah. cheeseburgers in a cave in yeah. Afghanistan. I brought you this ticking bag of McDonald's food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you probably would have checked it for bugs. Yeah, right. Have you considered the irony that um, so far you've made two separate documentaries about two evil, shadowy organisations yeah. <laughs> whose tentacles of power reach everywhere, both seemingly systematically dedicated to the the downfall of civilization. Yeah, it's a, it's a, well, so one, else, one Al Qaeda and one McDonald's. Yeah, like somebody else put. You didn't know who we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, Ronald Osama. Yeah, I think that's that's a great that's a great comparison. They are. These are both two people who uh, maybe they don't have our best interests in mind. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, they both kind of pay their employees very little. So, mm -hmm. are there any other similarities we should be aware of? Well, apparently, um, not only do they pay them very little, but also the people who are in Al Qaeda, like around the camps, there get fed very poorly as well. That the food is bad. I heard from a journalist who had met some uh, some Al Qaeda folks. No catering in Al Qaeda. No catering. Yeah, it's like, dude, he's got like Osama's got all that money. He can't get like a proper caterer. Can't get something good up in there. <laughs> Very sad. Yeah. What did you come away from personally? Like, what did you learn? You know, yeah. from do making a film like this because it was it was, a, it was a mammoth undertaking. What you did. Absolutely. You know, and you know, we shot like 900 hours of footage. Traveled to 25 countries over the course of making this movie. You know, the places you go, the people you meet, you can't help but be affected by something like this. And, uh, and I think that just this movie and all the, you know, from Super Size Me to our television's 30 Days, you know, the greatest thing that I've come out of this experience with is just intention. Like when you go into a situation, what's your intention? You know, what do you intend to have come out of it? And I think if you go into a situation with, with good intentions, then good things will, will result. And I think that that's what, what happened with the film. Thanks a lot for that, Morgan. Thank you. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks.